Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create some sort of deployable turret solution. So we're going to have this builder, here he is over here, you might have seen him before in some of my other videos. And he's going to be walking around with WSAD and whenever we push a key, I'm going to say spacebar, it's going to create on the mouse uh, cursor this semi-transparent little deployable turret. And when we click the left mouse button, it's going to place the turret on the ground, maybe it'll animate a little bit. And then that turret is going to spring to life and do the things you might have seen in um, any of the other tutorials. You can actually link it all together and it'll look really, really cool. You also notice that I'm using GameX Studio 2 for this. With the release of version 2.1, I felt it's time to give it another shot and things are looking a lot more stable and more responsive in my opinion. So I'm actually liking it. So I look forward to making many, many more GameX Studio 2 videos as well as maybe covering some of my older concepts of GameX Studio 8 and Studio 1 in here. So to start things off, let's go ahead and create an object, resources, create object, I'm going to call this object turret, uh, let's go, object turret draggable. Let's give him hmm, base sprite for now, it doesn't really matter, we're going to override that in a draw. First things first, let's make sure this draggable, whenever it's created, follows the mouse. Okay, so let me increase this font size, function F8, I believe. There we go. Let's say X equals mouse X and Y equals mouse Y. Next, let's go ahead and make this thing sort of animate while it's in the player's hand or player's control. Image angle plus, let's say plus equals about two, so nothing too serious. And obviously we wanted to move um, and snap at the same time to about 120, 120, just like that. So as the player moves his mouse, the draggable turret is going to follow that, but it's also going to snap to the 120 by 120 uh, grid. All right, so let's go ahead and actually draw the two pieces of the draggable turret. Draw sprite extended. I'm going to say the first piece is SPR turret base. And the self image is 0, x, y is going to be at x, y. Scale is going to be 1 and 1. Rotation, I'm going to say image angle. Color, c white, so no change in color. And alpha, 0 0.4, so it's going to be semi transparent. And I'm going to now just extend this a bit. Let's copy this line and let's paste it below. And this is going to be just SPR turret, so that's the top piece with the gun also 0 0.4 and in this case the angle is going to be 0. I don't want it to be animating at all. Not just yet at least. Okay, next event. Let's go for a global mouse left pressed. So I'm going to click somewhere in the game world. I want to create the actual turret and we want to destroy this draggable because it was just showing us where the position of the turret would be created at. So instance create now that we're using Gamer Studio 2, we have to say instance create layer is the actual one that you should be using. I want to do that at XY. And the name of the layer ID, it says here layer ID or name. Actually, if you come into the game world, let's pop that open. You notice here we have our layers. Now, this is really cool. Um, in GameMaker Studio, things were layered by their depth. In this case, you can actually create layers and add objects to certain layers and then that layer is given a depth so that's pretty cool stuff so if you want to create an instance on a specific layer if you don't have the ID you can use the name for in this case it's instances so let's exit that and we have to put it in quotes in instances just like that and what else is required object turret which doesn't exist just yet but we will create it also when it is created I want to go ahead and update its image angle, set it to that of other.imageAngle. Now other, in this case, because you're using the width contract over here, image angle over this refers to this object turret that's about to be created. Other means the object creating him, so in this case, object turret draggable. So I'm setting the image angle of the newly created object turret to that of the image angle of this object turret draggable um, that we're in right now. And after that, the draggable's done its job, so it can destroy itself. So let's run through that again. 
in the step we want to make sure that this draggable follows the player's mouse and the image angle is going to be increasing uh, by about two degrees per step just a little bit of an animation to keep things exciting and it's going to be snapping to this 120 by 120 grid and left press is going to be placing that down and destroying the draggable object so let's go ahead and create object turret create object save everything too again let's give him a little sprite and give him the base again let's go ahead and create some variables here firstly we want a turret angle initialize that to zero image angle is already initialized to zero but let's just put it there anyway um, spin I'm gonna put that as true so when we click someplace that we want a turret to be placed. The base is going to spin around for maybe a second or so, just to show that it's like drilling down into the soil or it's being created or built in some way. And then what we're going to do is in, I suppose, a second, it's just going to stop the spin and then it's going to be fixed. And at the fixed position, the turret is now allowed to rotate and look for targets. So let's also give it a speed, turret rotation speed and I want to go for random range between 1 I think and 2.5 shouldn't be too fast but it'll be interesting and to stop the spin I want to go ahead with an alarm at room speed times 1 so that's 1 second because our room speed is 30 as a default so let's manage the spin variable and um, handle the alarm too. So add an event step. Here I'm going to say, well, if we're allowed to spin or deploy, then it means our image angle is going to increase by, um, say, 8. Otherwise, if we're not spinning, it means we are deployed. And in that case, the turret angle needs to increase. because now we're active, and I'm going to increase it by the turret rotation speed over there. And we can also create that alarm, zero, which is just going to set spin to false. That's all it does. Spin equals false. All right, so when it's created, spin's true. And if spin's true, it's going to do this image angle business over here. And then a second later, spin's going to be false. So then it's immediately going to go to the next bit, which then tells it to now rotate the turret and look for targets. And we can actually go up here to our draw event and steal some code. Oh, what's this thing complaining about? Something might be missing. A comma. There we go. Take these lines, copy them. Scroll down. Add event. Draw. Paste. Again, exactly the same, only this time. I want to have a completely opaque uh, turret and base and the zero instead of a zero basically it's going to be the value that we created in here turret angle very cool I like these tabs I must say I really do like these tabs this is a lot of fun so far all right so now that we've got the draggable and the draggable creates the turret and destroys itself how do we get a draggable what kind of key press can we do to create an instance like this that then enables us to put down a turret. Well, we've got our player over here, and he's listening for some key presses, WSAD to move around. His image angle is being updated to point towards our mouse. So how about we do something like this? Keep keyboard check, and here we're gonna use something simple like VK space. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, so long as instance I'm looking for instance exists as long as not instance exists object turret draggable so as long as we don't have a draggable already out there in the field instance create and this is again layer I'm going to create it at mouse X, mouse Y, it doesn't really matter at this point I mean if you create it at an arbitrary value as soon as the first step executes, it will then fly to the mouse X and mouse Y, but it's always good to put it there immediately so there isn't a minor delay if it is at all noticeable. Instances. And I want to create an object of object turret draggable. Just like that. 
Another thing I want to do is, I'm going to say, well, what happens if the user presses the escape key? So if keyboard check again, VK escape, I think it is. We can go ahead and say with object turret draggable. Instance destroy. Just like that. And what I like to do is just to be safe. Is check if this instance exists before I try and delete it. Which is just a sanity check for me. It's not really required. And then these can go up like that. Okay, cool. So that about puts everything into perspective. Now I'm gonna run through it in sort of an order of, of execution, just so that it makes more sense. So as a player running around, pointing towards our mouse and WSADing, if we push space, it's gonna create a draggable. Draggable over here is quite simple. It just rotates a little bit and it follows the mouse and snaps to this imaginary invisible grid. Then we're drawing the two sprites, the base and the turret, one of which, obviously the base, is the one that is rotating. When we left press, I'm going to create an instance of object turret on the instance's layer, set its image angle to that of the build mode that's rotating, and destroy this turret draggable. So when that turret is created down here, it initializes some values, it starts spinning, randomizes how fast its turret will then spin when it's built, and that spin is going to be deactivated in one second. So build mode ends in one second. You can see alarm zero sets it to false, and the step, while it's supposed to spin, it's doing it by 8 degrees a step, otherwise the turret is rotating by whatever random value number 6, line 6 returned. And then in our draw event, again, we are drawing that turret to the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and save everything and actually see how this all worked out. Alright, so here we are within the game world. We've got our player. He's running around as a constructor with WSAD. And if he pushes the space bar... Ah, look at this. We've got that turret draggable over here, and you can see it's transparent. And um, the bottom is animating the turret part of it. The gun, at least, is not. That's okay. And this looks exciting. It's snapping to the grid. It's following our mouse. And let's see if I can plonk it down over here. So it should spin for about a second, and then it would be completed. The build would be completed, and the turret at the top, the gun part, will start to rotate at a random um, initial speed. Blam. Look at that. Speeds up, built. And now it's rotating. Look at that. Now you can place a whole lot of turrets for defense. Great for a tower defense game. Perhaps you want to make one of those. Just like that. We've got as many turrets as we want. Looks really cool, eh, guys? So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you've got any cool ideas just like this that I can make happen for you, send me a PM or comment on this video. This actual tutorial was suggested by a viewer just like you. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. The project files for the solution can be found right in the description. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.